Today we're going to be taking a look at the tremendous All Powers SP037 400 watt solar panel and we'll test it out to see whether or not it can actually deliver the 400 watts and then I'll leave you with my final thoughts on whether or not this is actually a solar panel that you should consider buying. And at the moment the SP037 has over 111 reviews on Amazon with an average rating of 4.2 out of 5 so it'll be interesting to see what kinds of speeds we can really get from it and whether or not these ratings are fair. At the time of making this video this panel is available for a little bit cheaper on Al Power's website but I'm not sure how long this deal will be available for so if you do see it at a good price it would probably probably be worth jumping on based on my experience. And if you want to jump to a particular section in the video, you can reference the timestamps down below as well. But before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. So I've tested out a bunch of different all power solar panels, including their 60 watt, their 100 watt and their 200 watt panels. And the SP037 has the same fabric coating that we've seen on their other panels. And there's also a simple carrying handle on top and on the back, there's a huge zipper compartment, which organizes the MC4 style connectors, which you can use to connect the power station. And it also includes an MC4 to XC60 cable, an MC4 to DC5525 and a DC8020 cable, so it's compatible with many All Powers power stations and many other brands as well. The polycrystalline panels have an ETFE lamination, which is a superior technology, and the whole setup weighs 47 pounds or 21 kilos, so it's definitely on the heavier side. And the footprint of the panel is about 40 inches by 20 inches by 3 inches. The quality of the panel isn't the worst I've seen, but it's not the best either, and it's somewhere in the middle. And there is a decent amount of flex with these panels, and there's no solid back like I've seen on some other panels, but that would probably make this panel even heavier than it already is but I expect that it should hold up relatively well as long as you're not too rough on it. This is the first 400 watt panel that I've tested and I was a bit surprised at how large it actually is and I've got it set up in the back of the All Powers 200 watt panel and also their 100 watt panel which I've already done some testing on and I'll link to some of that data down below as well. Anyway seeing them side by side helps you grasp the incredible size of the panel when it's open and I am really excited to test it out and see how it performs but you do definitely notice the weighting of this panel which does make the setup process a bit more cumbersome in comparison and setting up the panel proved to be a little bit trickier than the other panels that I've used in the past due to its size and weight but I found that the easiest way to set it up is to open up the first kickstand and fold open the panel one section at a time with the supporting kickstand until all five sections are open and ultimately it did prove to be relatively easy to manage the kickstands are very easy to open but they are a bit flimsy and one downside to the kickstands is that they don't really provide all that much room to adjust the angle the panel and there's really only room to adjust them a few degrees and they are pretty much fixed in the open position at this angle but you could just lay the panel flat or you could try to prop it up against something now we're going to perform a charging test to see how close we get to hitting the 400 watt claimed and in order to test out the charging speed we'll be plugging in the panel to the all powers r1500 power station and i'll leave a link to my review of that power station down in the description below as well anyways it's nice that all of the cables that you need to hook up the power station are easily accessible and it should just take you a few minutes to get everything all set up and plugged in. And after we do, it'll take a few seconds before the power station recognizes the solar charger, but it does start charging up pretty quickly. And after a few seconds, the charging speeds did start out kind of slow, but then they did begin to pick up and we were able to get to a maximum of 351 watts at right around 11 a.m., which I am very satisfied with. And it's a bit better than I was actually expecting. And since the panel is so big and bulky, I'm not gonna bother with trying to optimize the angle anymore as it would be quite a pain with the setup of this size. So we'll just roll with these numbers. Anyways, 351 watts is 88% of the 400 that All Powers claimed, which brings the true cost per watt to around $1.42 per watt. Now I'll discuss whether or not this is actually a panel you should buy. And I've tested out dozens of solar panels this year and began to put together a database with my solar panel testing data to help put the performance of each panel into better perspective compared to their competitors. And as I review new panels, I'll add them to this database as well. So be sure to check back from time to time. And I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. But this is the first 400 watt panel that I've tested. And for the sake of making the comparison a bit more fair, I'll filter out everything except for the 200 watt panels and above. And as you can see, this panel is actually pretty close in price to many of the 200 watt panels that I've looked at. And it's a little over $100 more than the All Powers 200 watt panel. It does blow the rest of these panels out of the water from a watt perspective, but that's not really a fair comparison point. But what I really did find interesting was that this panel actually delivered the closest to the claim versus test watts at about 88%, which was significantly better than all the other panels here and pretty much every other panel that I've ever 
never tested. It also has an exceptionally low cost per watt score at $1.42, which also makes it the most affordable of any panel that I've tested so far. The entry point is pretty expensive at about $500 on sale, but I am quite satisfied with these results. And if you're on the fence about whether or not you should jump up to a bigger panel, I would definitely recommend doing it because you'll really appreciate the faster charging speeds if your power station can handle it. Al Powers, you did a great job with this panel, so I have no problem recommending it to anybody looking to get an affordable and efficient large portable panel. And with regards to the Amazon rating, I think it was actually pretty close, but I'd venture to give it a 4.5 out of 5 instead of a 4.2, especially if you can get the panel at a good price. Let me know what your thoughts are on All Powers down in the comment section. And if you have any interest in picking one up and supporting the channel, please consider using the links down in the description below. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more power station and solar panel reviews like this one.